Let's uh, think about an avatar here, a 35-year-old Chris, and he comes to see you. He's just heard you talk about um, an APOB level. You should have uh, given me a woman case. It's International Women's okay. Day today, I think. Okay. Well, let's change, let's, <laughs> no, but let's change it. Change it to Christina. So, uh, okay. Christina, um, and, and perhaps there are some women to women who go by Chris as well. So, um, but I did say he, so let's, let's change it to, to she, she comes to you and she has a history of her, uh, APOB being about 120 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. You mentioned earlier, that's, that's kind of a level and she's tried to make lifestyle changes and it hasn't really budged. So that's a level where you're, um, somewhat concerned and you'd like to see it lower. But she also presents to you, remember she's 35, with a coronary artery calcium scan and it, sh- it, it came back with a score of zero. And so she says to you, well, doesn't this scan prove to you that despite the, the high level of LDL cholesterol or ApoB, it doesn't seem to be sort of negatively affecting me? And I would say, yes, if all I was worried about you is for the next 10 years, uh, I have very little worries that you're ever going to wind up in a CCU or a bypass unit or so. But Christina, you seem like a very nice woman. Uh, I know you got two little kids, so you want to one day be a great grandma too. So you want to be 80 and 90 years old. So at a certain point, we're certainly going to have to worry about your ApoB level, despite the fact that at your mid 30 age, you don't have any coronary atherosclerosis. So two things I would look at Christina before even mentioning that I want to use drugs or I don't want to use drugs. What is your LP little a? If that's high, she's going on a drug in my uh, clinic. That's for sure. An ApoB lowering drug. But I'd want to know other things about her. In women, the pregnancy history is crucial. Has she had Uh, How many children does she have? At what age did your children come along? Uh, uh, Were there any complications during the pregnancy, preeclampsia, hypertension of pregnancy, things like that, diabetes? They would all, they all pretend early cardiovascular risk in a woman as she uh, gets in that perimenopausal age or so. And you would take an ApoB level much more serious in a woman who had that. For sure, you'd want to know the family history. I'd want to know early in life, was PCOS ever a problem? Polycystic ovarian syndrome, because <clears throat> that predisposes them to significant risk. So we should have stuck with your male evaluation. They're a lot easier to evaluate. There's so much more to know about a a woman when you really want to zero in on a most accurate cardiovascular risk assessment. So let's assume she had none of those above. If she had children, I'd want to know, did she lactate, by the way? That offers cardio protection as time goes on. Then if, no, I never breastfed the kids, that would predispose her to more cardiovascular risk also. So you have all those things you'd want to actually document, uh, uh, you know, miscarriages, or what was the size of the baby when they're born? Were they really big kids or normal weight kids? all imply cardiovascular risk down the road a little bit. So again, if she had none of those and a negative coronary calcium, the next thing I would ask her is, are you and your husband planning on having any more children? Because if she says yes, when? Soon, you're 35, you're not going to wait till you're 50 to have them. Yeah, you might not want to get into lipid drug management if the uh, with a negative coronary calcium and the lipid levels weren't severely malignant or so. So I might give her, fine, we're going to watch you closely, go have more kids if you want to. And when you come back and tell me that I'm done with kids and I'll either accept birth control pill or have my tubes tied or um, hubby's got the uh, his tied off, then we would start to consider when do we really start? ApoB lowering drug in you. And to be honest with you, if her ApoB is up in that 60th percentile range sooner rather than later, if I can ex- not worry, she wants to have any more children down the road. So, but the bottom line is individualize, individualize, individualize. Every human is different. What I might suggest to her would have no application to the next woman that walks in. Why is it that if she was planning to have more children, you wouldn't start lipid lowering therapy. Is it that they can affect the development of the the fetus? 
in part, yeah, look, if you're going to go through a pregnancy nowadays, it's best not to be on any non-necessary drugs. So she's going to be pregnant for nine months. She doesn't have a super malignant ApoB level that's going to kill her in nine months. She doesn't have existing coronary disease, so she might actually have a heart attack during her pregnancy. So oh, why would you want to uh, mess with drugs? If her ApoB, though, was super serious, I would say... Listen, you take this drug until you now say, that's it. We're going to start planning for the kids. We're going to, you know what they got to do to have kids. So then I would stop the statin therapy. Then say, go get pregnant. Hopefully it'll occur quickly. We'll give you nine months. We'll give you a year or two to lactate. And then we will res uh, consider resuming. Now, if she really had, say, familial hypercholesterolemia, disastrous lipids, Statins are now approved for the later stages of pregnancy to use in very high-risk women, it, whereas they were always what we used to call Category X unapproved. Now there are dispensations for the super high risk, but a non-super high risk, you're, you're not going to treat lipids during the pregnancy. Mm -hmm.